Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video, we're going to do as we've done similarly in a couple other videos, but we're going to create that Rubik's Cube shape, but we're going to be doing it by using scripting and using the array modifier within the modifiers over here. So like if we click over here, add modifier and array. So let's go ahead and get started by clicking on scripting and click new, import, BPY, and I'm going to turn on colors and line numbers and do bpy.object.data I keep forgetting so ops.object.select all and then action equals select so what I'm just doing now is I'm selecting everything that's in my scene and I'm going to delete it now So let's just run that to make sure we got no issues. So I'm just deleting everything. Now let's just do bpy dot um, ops dot mesh dot primitive cube add. I'll just leave the default values. Now something that's cool about this is if we use the modifier, if we use the for loops like we did before, um, we have to use location, but I think we can actually get away with not even having to put location in there by using an array. So let's just go ahead and create an array. Uh, let's go down to modifier, add modifier. If we highlight over array, we can see that it says bpy or python bp bpy.ops.object modifier add. So we can just do. Uh, practically what we've got up there already bpy.ops.object and then modifier add type array bpy.ops.object.modifier type equals array sweet let's run that and see if we got any errors we do let's make sure that we typed it incorrectly bpy.ops.object.modifier oh yep underscore add sweet and now it works so now we have an array modifier and you may be saying okay that's not the Rubik's cube yet and you're exactly right that's because we only have two for our count and our offset is probably a little bit different it needs to be a little bit different so let's go ahead and just highlight over the count now we can just do bpy.data.objects and it says to use cube. We're going to use zero and I'll tell you why in just a second. Dot modifiers array dot count. So let's go ahead and do bpy.data.objects and we're using data because it's already created. So bpy.data.objects. So we're saying like what objects do we have in our scene and just to show you what's going on. This is the console. We can type some stuff into it. Uh, to see real-time things. So for us off, we have a collection of objects. If we do at array zero or at the list at the zero position in the list, we have our cube, which is this cube. So we can just actually reference the zero. It just looks cleaner as well. Um, now we can just do modifiers array count modifiers uh, um, array dot count. Sweet. Uh, let's actually type that in here as well because I want to show you another thing. Okay, it gives us a number. This 2, which is the exact number as, the, as this. Uh, this actually is pulling from this command. So we can just change that by setting it equal to 3. And if we were to run this, we now have our three objects. I'm also just going to tab down a little bit and do bpy.ops.object.select all action equals deselect just to get rid of the annoying yellow lines around the edges every time we run the script. So this is this is correct so far. We have three, an array of three. 
Uh, let's just say we want this to be a little bit bigger in between though, and we do. We can use this. Uh, we want to use the bottom one. bpy.data.objects, the cube, modifiers, array, relative offset, displace at zero. Okay, so that was pretty long. It's actually just the same thing as this. So we can look at this. All we need to remember is relative offset displace. Relative offset displace. If we uh, enter that, let's see. Oh, at zero. Yep, we need that. I was going to say it didn't give the result that I was intending. Sweet. Relative offset displace. That is also probably just because it's probably an array or a list of these three. So if we highlight over this and it's one and two. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So if we now do, um, sorry, if I click on here and I change this to one now, it's probably going to put zero. Yep, and this one's going to be zero as well. And if we do three, it won't, it shouldn't exist. Yeah, so we get an error if we do three. So zero, one, two, or zero, one, two. Let's go ahead and change that then. So let's say we want our one to be uh, 1.1, 1 .1, just so there's a little bit of a gap in between. At zero dot modifiers. Array. Nope. At zero. And now let's just set this equal to 1.1 and see what happens. We run the script. We have them going 1.1. Okay, sweet. So now we have an array there. Let's now duplicate our array. So I'm just going to copy and paste another array down there. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. I want to create an array. And I want to duplicate it twice. And you can see it's going to create a whole big long one of them. And that's okay. So now you can see that we have, we might have an issue here. Because we have more than one array, we need to make sure that we name our modifier changers correctly. So it's going to be array.001. So I'm just going to copy and paste these as well. This one is actually going to be a zero. Because we, yeah, both of these are actually a zero. And I'll show you why in just one second. So we need to put 0 .001 on both of these. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. Uh, whoops. to both of those. Okay, now what I've just done is I have I created an array and the first one's named array. So I changed the settings for the first array. I've now created second array and the second array is called array.001. Change the count to three and then I have array.001 displaces now zero. Uh, we now need to change, we need to add another one of those as well. And let's name it's going to be the second value down, and let's put that equal to 1.1. And I'm just going to paste those, copy and paste. Just doing a lot of copying and pasting for a second. Sweet. So now this is what your stuff should look like. Uh, we're just creating, we set this into zero, oops, this should actually be zero as well, and this needs to be one, two, two, two. So now for array one, or for the second array, we've set the first offset displace to zero, we set this into 1.1, 1 .1, and this is still zero. For this third one, we've done zero, zero, and 1.1. 1 .1 right here. Now if we run this, we have it go up like this, which is closer. Uh, our issue here 
Oops, I'm sorry. This is probably getting a little bit crazy now. I can't show you as easy in a small box. Our issue is our array is just, it kept on going this way. So we, it's because in somewhere, oh, we need to, I changed these, I shouldn't have. This should be a zero, this should be a zero, this should be a one, and that should be a two. Zero, yeah, because we're changing the relative displace of the first one, and then this one is this one, this one is the first one, this one's the second one, and that's the third one. Now if we run it, aha, now we have our Rubik's Cube shape, and the cool thing about this is uh, it's perfect. Again, just like our for loop. Those gaps are exactly the same dimensions in between here as here and as here. So I hope this has encouraged uh, some thought of things that you can do with a array modifier. And the really cool thing is, is we can, let's just say we delete this and we run the script. It creates all of that instantaneously. We don't have to worry about that. And that's the power of scripting. And so good luck with your Blender projects that you have in the future, and I hope this helps. Thank you. Bye-bye.